Hey everyone, I am back once again. So, just to let you all know, um, this electronics hobby of mine, I really have much more fun and fulfillment out of the hardware than the software. Um, I love software, don't get me wrong. Many of you have probably heard that's what I do for a living. So, because of that, when a project just gets to the software stage, I can quickly get bored and, and want to get back to using my hands and, and playing around with mechanics. So, that being said, I am, and I also mentioned in my last video that I really think I made a mistake by extending her front end since my problem with center of gravity was in her rear end. But once um, another user, Steffi, and I talked about adding a second Arduino, which was going to control all the sensors and such in the head, obviously that pushed me more towards putting the extension in her head or in her front end. But again, it didn't help balance much right off the bat. I haven't tried recalibrating the legs a bit yet. But rather than do that, I'm going to go ahead and add another extension to her rear. So I just wanted to show you guys quickly how you do that in case you guys want to keep up with me and, and make these changes to your version. If not, I plan to try and keep them as separate as possible on Thingiverse and GitHub and such. So anyhow, what I had to do is basically reprint this one piece which used to sit right here at the end of the chassis and the only reason why it gets reprinted is because it has a few extra holes for the frame and then I nip out the corners which you can see on this yellow version here I ran out of black filament but you can see the corners are nipped out and that helps with as you can see on her front piece here it's a great place for the wires to go and it looks much cleaner and there's no risk of the wires being pinched in the motor. So I'm going to do the same thing back here. That's why that piece had to be reprinted. If it just needed holes, yeah, we could have just drilled them out, but it's much cleaner and it's a pretty easy piece to reprint. And then this is the extension piece, which is basically the same as the front extension piece, but mirrored. And I also had to open the framework up a little bit so that there was room for these screws because it is assembled mirror image of this one. So because of that, yes, I had, which is no big deal. It's actually better because it opens this space up more for us. Okay, and then the back piece that the back panel hooks onto is the same, nothing changes there. So I have took off the, taken off the legs. Um, I have not rebuilt these back ones yet with my new pieces that has this wire chase and then the new um, knee piece, which is much more stable. And honestly, I'm not in the mood to take them apart and redo them, so I think I'm going to pass this time. Next time I do rear end surgery, I will rebuild the legs and do a video on that. Okay, so yes, I'm going to, this is already screwed onto the chassis now. So now all I have to do is mount my motors to this piece here. And then, well, I should say in between these two pieces here. And we're good to go. And then, of course, yes, we have to reprint the top and bottom again because they get longer. And now I've encroached on another problem. It's now 280 millimeters for the top, and that's not going to fit on my Ender 3 to print. So, yes, I have to come up with a way of doing it in two pieces, but there are a lot of ways of doing that and, and you know, just basically creating some kind of joint in between. But what I do, I wanted to share with you guys in projects like this, is trying to get dimensions correctly rather than print the whole top right i basically just clipped out the whole pattern as you can see here and again in this case i had to do it in two pieces this is for the top and then i just glue them together with a little bit of super glue so now i have my whole pattern so now i'll be able to once she's fully assembled put this into place over the holes and see make sure that it, it's accurate before i go and print the whole lid right and if it's not accurate, I'll make my adjustments on the holes, and then I'll print the lid. So, that's just a little tip for you guys to save some time in plastic, because yes, 3D printing can take hours. As a matter of fact, I believe the top cover, previous one, now I'm adding 50 millimeters to it, took, I think, 16 hours for me to print. And then, finally, I'm also going to remove the PS2 from her top. Well, let me rephrase that. Rather than make this, oops, rather than make it a big piggyback backpack like it was before, I'm going to install this sensor 
without this big body on it, obviously, in our new cavity here so that it's inside of it like that and just sticking up a tiny bit. And we'll just cut a little slot in the lid and the PS2 remote will be right there. So her top will be nice and clean lined and, and no more backpack. And then the human interface sensor, the PIR sensor that I have on this, um, it, it's a fun little sensor, but it really doesn't serve much purpose except to you know, detect somebody walking next to her and then she can react. We do have the ultrasonic sensors that we can do that with. Um, I'm thinking more of maybe keeping this, but I may actually install two more so that I could put one on each side of her and one in her front. That way she'll be able to detect, some, detect somebody all around her and I'm almost thinking that I'll be able to use that to give her a, a follow mode. So she'll be able to sense and see when there's a human near her and where it where that person is and to turn towards it and start walking towards it. Unfortunately, these sensors don't give you any kind of distance or direction. That's why I would have to use multiple ones. But it's just an idea. Anyway, this is not going on her top of her back anymore, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, everybody, so I will shoot another update when I have her all assembled and hopefully back on the ground. Thanks for watching, as always. Like, share, and subscribe.